Hello everybody and welcome to another hit film video. Today we'll be showing you some tips and tricks, five in fact, when green screening inside of HitFilm 4 Express. So let's begin. First of all guys, I hope you like the new intro. Don't know whether it's permanent or not, but uh, I'll let you guys decide that. So go ahead, jump into the comment section below, and tell me what you think of the new intro. The second thing that I wanted to say was that the difficulty level on this tutorial would be 3 stars out of 5, because there are some things that you need to know, and I'll be going through them relatively quickly. So let's begin with this tutorial. As you can see, now in HitFilm 4 Express here, we've got this comp. This is probably not what you saw at the beginning of the video, but something that I've done just to test out what I've been creating in this tutorial. But I'm just going to go ahead and reset all this now, so let's go back to the beginning. Alright, so here we are with everything deleted, back to the original. All we've got here is the actor in front of the green screen doing some obscene gestures, and also an image of a road, which of course I've just chosen for demonstration purposes. The first tip is to use the green screen key preset, because this will really save you time. If you go into keying, into your folders, you'll notice a bunch of different keys. Sometimes it can be hard to know which one to choose. Well, an easy way to apply green screen is to just search up for the green screen key effect. Now this is actually a preset under presets, 2D effects and green screen key. Just go ahead and drag that on your video and it will apply three effects to your video automatically. And as you notice, it's done a pretty good job so far. Now I won't go into the color difference key because I've kind of covered that in my basic green screen tutorial, but essentially what these two effects do, which make it really worthwhile using this preset, is that you can adjust the mat. So I can smooth out the actual shape of the mat, I can feather it out to soften it, or I can choke it in if it's a bit too wide. You can also view the mat here as well. Everything that's white will be visible, everything that's black will disappear. And you can use spill removal, which is probably one of the most underrated uh, green screen key effects and is definitely necessary for almost every single green screen. As you can see, when we turn it off, we can see this noticeable green reflection from the green screen that's being reflected onto the body of the actor. So with the spill removal on extended, it pretty much just removes all of this and makes it look a whole ton better. Alright, so that's the first tip. The second tip is to do a bit of color correction to the person on the green screen to match the background. So in this video right here, the actor is looking pretty normal, it looks like pretty normal video, but the background is pretty flat, pretty low contrast, and it's not very colorful either. So we're going to have to do the same to this guy in the foreground. Now if your background is very colorful, very contrasty, you might want to do something which mimics that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two effects on right here. I'm going to grab the levels histogram, just pop it on after that, and also the hue, saturation, and lightness. So I'm just going to start off with the hue, saturation, and lightness. In the master, I'm just going to turn the saturation down a bit, and in the levels histogram, I'm just going to make the output black a bit higher so that the blacks aren't quite so black but more of a grey. And I think that works pretty well. The next step, which is my third tip, is to use a shadow. Now this isn't applicable for every single thing, but for a lot of things it works pretty well. So with something like this, with just someone standing in front of a background, there are numerous ways to do a shadow. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command D on my Mac keyboard or Control D on a PC. Then in the layer below, I'm just going to go into the effects and under the hue, saturation, and lightness, under the master, I'm just going to bring the saturation all the way down. And by the way, we can just see what this has done by hiding the top layer. And in the levels histogram, I'm just going to get the output white, and I'm just going to drag it all the way down so that it's completely black. Then I'm going to go into the warp section, and then I'm just going to go and find the perspective warp effect. And I'm just going to drag it on after all of these. If we change the latitude, we can see it makes it so it's kind of on the same plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the transform, I'm going to move it down, sorry, move it down, until this line is kind of at the vanishing point right there. And then we can adjust the latitude 
until these lines kind of match. So I think that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is on the wrap Z, I'm going to hit none and none, and that way we just have the one shadow. If we show our top layer again, we can see the shadow on the ground, and it looks not so bad. What we can do is, because now it's just directly behind him, we can also change the swing. So I'm just going to hide the top layer, and we can change the swing to make it rotate around. I'm just going to go ahead and make it rotate around this way. Of course, with the lighting conditions in your background, you might want to change the way the shadows are, and then you can just move the layer into place. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to unlink the scale, and on the X, I'm just going to scale it in a bit. And then to finish off this shadow shape, I'm going to, first of all, set the blend mode to be darken or multiply or overlay, and then in the opacity, you can just bring it down until you have the shadow at the desired opacity. Then you can also search up for something like a blur effect. Just drag that on after everything, and it will blur the layer so that it's less of a harsh shadow, especially if you've got more diffuse light like in, in this scene. Now to be honest, in this scene I don't really need a shadow that's pronounced as this, but I'm just doing this to show you guys anyway. So that's the third tip, to add a shadow. The next step is to add a blur to the background. This is not necessary, and of course the footage looks pretty great like this already, but it's just an optional thing that you might want to think about doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new grey layer. I'm just going to drag this grey layer above the shadow, but below the actual actor. And then I'm going to search for the lens blur effect, or you can use the default blur if you want to reduce render times. But I'm just going to grab the lens blur effect, and you'll notice that it provides this really nice, smooth looking blur, which you'd find on the out of focus areas of a camera lens. This looks really nice, and it's a really cool realistic effect. Now that looks pretty good actually, but I'm just going to add a quick mask. And then I'm just going to turn off the lens blur effect to reduce lag, but I'm just going to add a mask onto the lens blur layer. And then if I just check lens blur, I'm just going to open up my mask, I'm going to set it to be inverted, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want it to be more blurry the further along it goes. So here I want it to be pretty sharp, and here I want it to be very blurry because it's very far away. So to adjust this gradation, I'm just going to further the strength of the mask, and then in the transform section, I'm just going to move it down a bit. And of course, that probably won't apply to your scene, it's just something that applies to my scene, so again, without the mask, and with the mask, some of this bit is sharper. And then my final tip, my fifth tip, is that once you've put all of the actual green screen elements together, make sure that you do a final color grade over everything. So that includes both the background, all of the effects you've added, and the actor in front. So go ahead and create a new grade layer, and do a color grade that kind of suits the image. The important thing here is to make sure that it's applied to all the clips because that'll make them look like they're all from the same scene, and they've all been graded together. I'm just going to drag on my favorite curves effect, and mess around with it a bit. That's my final grade done, and my final effect completed. So to go through these five tips, which really make your green screen much, much easier, and much more realistic, the first is to add the grade with all of the matte cleaner effects, and the spill removal to get rid of that nasty green reflection. The next step was to grade the actor to match the background to ensure that they fit in the same kind of scene. The next one was to add a shadow, which added to the realism of the shot because it shows that the actor was also interacting with the background. Then I added some blur into the background to make it look like it was an out of focus area on the camera lens, and I made it only visible in the back parts of the image and not so much in the front, that way it looked like this bit was closer and less out of focus. And the final thing I did was to add a grade over the top of everything to make sure that it all looked like it was in the same world. So thank you guys for watching this video a whole ton. It's only thanks to you guys that I make these videos, so if you can, please leave a like on this video, and if this did help you and you want to learn more things about HitFilm, go ahead and hit the subscribe button to get more video content just like this. Again, comment below what you thought of my new intro, and I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay shiny. Bye.